Off the cutting room floor and its host has no association with Santo Rigatuso, Robert Bob Harris, Joey So, Santo Gold, Blood Circus, or any related business, alias, or entity. All information presented has been gathered through public sources. I admit, this has been a relatively short season. Which doesn't explain why it took so long to get out, but still. But, to be honest, when I started it, this story was just supposed to be a quick one-off episode. And then... Things got away from me. I dove into newspapers.com, then the official website, then the Wayback Machine, and even Wikipedia edit histories. And it all became too much for a single episode of a bite-sized film history podcast. But every major article, profile, YouTube video that I looked at ended the story where I ended it in episode 4. So I went off on my own to find out whatever happened to Santo Ragazzo and Santo Gold's Blood Circus. I'm Jaws Hoskinson, and this is Loose Leaf Celluloid. Episode 5. I Don't Like My Name Being Sold. Shortly after Blood Circus ended its run in Baltimore, Regatto was arrested by authorities from the U.S. Postal Service for mail fraud charges related to his Santo Gold business. His attorney attempted to have the charges dismissed based on mental incompetence and used Blood Circus as an example of Regatto's genius. Blood Circus has been reported to be lost for over 25 years, but that is a rumor. Santo Gold's Blood Circus will be available somewhere around 2009. Santee White was born on September 25, 1976 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Nicknamed Santo Gold by a classmate as a kid, the name came from a cheap infomercial for this cheap gold company. Quote, It was like he was selling this weird wrestling movie. He was selling these cheap earrings and he had one song. After high school, she went on to study at Connecticut's Wesleyan University, where she double majored in music and African American studies before serving as an artist and repertory representative for Epic Records, going on to co-write and produce Reese's debut album, How I Do. In April 2008, using her childhood nickname, she released her debut album, self-titled Santo Gold. To straight up copy and paste Wikipedia for a second, Blending a variety of musical genres ranging from new wave to alternative rock and reggae, the album was well received by critics upon release and was noted for its cross-genre confidence. The album proved to be a success, ending up on multiple best of lists of the year. In 2009, she released this press release. Santo Gold is now Santi Gold. She's not telling you why, that's just how it is. No unpronounceable symbol, no numbers where they shouldn't be, no random capitalization. Just plain ass Sansy Gold, so remember that. Based on what this season is about, I bet you can guess why. On June 18th, 2008, Stereo Gum reported that the new Santo Gold was being sued by the old Santo Gold, Santo Victor Regasso, for infringing on his name and likeness. Though I haven't been able to find the original complaint cited, I have been able to find an amended complaint, dated September 9th, 2008. In short, Santo, cited as a resident of Florida, was seeking damages from the use of his name, the destruction of all items that infringe on his name and likeness, and an injunction, barring Santee White from using the name Santo Gold or, quote, anything substantially similar. Apparently, by using his likeness and buying up related web domains, she willfully, quote, caused and will continue to cause irreparable damage to plaintiff and his ability to sell his music and movies and his public persona in the future. His evidence proving that White willfully and knowingly infringed on his likeness? An interview with Trash Menagerie, where she admitted to wearing jewelry similar to his. Trash Menagerie no longer exists, but even back then it was an alleged interview, so take it as you will. And an interview, where she says it was a nickname she was given by a childhood friend, taken from cheap infomercial for this cheap gold company. Oh, and in a TV performance, she wore sunglasses. The audacity. To give him... some... credit, she did admit to one of his allegations in her legal response to the amended complaint against her. She did, in fact, have a friend in school who gave her the name Santo Gold from a cheap infomercial. Apparently, the name change wasn't good enough for Santo or his legal team, with Jill L. Bitball of the Legist Men Firm <laughs> good enough, telling the LA Times Music blog that it wasn't done under any agreement between the two parties and that litigation would be ongoing. 
No public information is available on how that panned out, though Santy White still goes by Santy Gold, if you're wondering. Around this same time, someone was using Wikipedia to, well, some would call it edit, others would call it vandalize articles related to Santy Gold and her self-titled album, and reply to a warning on their user talk page with this. Now she calls herself Santy Gold, and still has it on her Wikipedia under that name. Changing one letter from O to I does not correct the problem. I'm going to make it very clear, we do not know if the person behind these edits were Santo Regazzo or anyone related to him. We cannot be certain. Anyone can edit Wikipedia, as your high school teacher would tell you. I am only having Hunter read them as Santo for the purposes of storytelling. I am not making any comment on the author of the statement and any other statements made by said user, and ignore my winks for they are satire. However, I did spend an absurd amount of time on Wikipedia as a teenager, and using some old dusty seals to dig further. And based on how the user's contributions were written, I am willing to say that the edits were done by someone connected to various other IPs and accounts used to make various other edits to Blood Circus and Santi Gold related articles including the user's spray bottle with no E, the same username as the Santo Gold YouTube account, and JetTrack843, whose first edit was to upload a picture literally commenting, Hi, my name is Joseph Fragasso, who, based on further research, might be Santo's son. And, during a 2009 Sock Puppet account investigation, Wikipedia moderators deemed Spray Bottle a sock puppet account for user Santo Gold, along with Scream Bags, Santo Gold Legend, L E G O N D, Santo Gold YouTube, Santo Gold MySpace, Santo Gold Earth, and I Am Santo Gold. But, you know, allegedly. This all seems to have inspired Santo to put his money where his mouth was and actually re enter the music industry announcing an album titled I Am The Real Santo Gold soon after, and releasing a single of the same name around the same time, featuring the lyrics, So don't use my name to create your fame. Believe me, kid, this is not a game. Because I'm the real Santo Gold, and I don't like my name being stoled. Whether or not the album came out in full, I honestly could not tell you. However, multiple songs were released on YouTube, with one of those Wikipedia edits noting that, quote, many are simply silly, including Simon Says, Ants, Some of Us, Obama Stomp, I don't know, and I honestly don't even want to look into it, and You're Fired, a song inspired by Do- Don- Do- <sighs> Around this same time, yet another Santo Gold venture was undertaken with the following text appearing on the Santo Gold website by September 13th, 2008. Do you have talent? You could be discovered in Santo Gold's talent search, and you could be entered into the Top 10 Hall of Fame, as thousands have already seen. Do you know someone that has talent? Should you be among the fortunate and talented artists to be inducted into the Top 10 Hall of Fame? You could be seen by millions and possibly be discovered. Many famous celebrities have already been inducted into Santo Gold's Top 10 Hall of Fame on stage in front of thousands. Now you too can become a part of history. Email us a sample of your talent, not longer than two minutes and one submission per person must be clean family type performances. If you are selected, you will be notified and a small fee will be requested and not everyone will be selected. All ages will be considered. See if you qualify now. Oh, a small fee if selected? Golly, how about that? The text would later be edited to remove any mention of a fee and to make clear that no credit card was needed. It's free. To save you the time, googling any variation of Santo Gold Hall of Fame only leads back to the Santo Gold website, so if anyone's been discovered through it, it's a closely guarded secret by all involved. Sometime later that month, the following was also added. Breaking news. The actual Blood Circus Masters and 35mm Negatives, first full-length 35mm wrestling film reported lost for 23 years, have now been found and limited license rights are now available for executive producers to come forward and contact us. There can be only one Elvis Presley, one Walt Disney, one Einstein, one Houdani, and just one Santo Gold. Though the news may not have been breaking. 
just now with a suit against Santi White just of possible interest. With the July 6, 2009 revision of the user talk page for Santo Gold Earth claiming, Santo Gold's blood circus was reported lost for years and suddenly it reappeared in 2001. And that's not all. A making of DVD for sale up on the website also appeared around this time, and it does seem to actually exist. Though, like everything else surrounding this film, it looks incredibly DIY. At the very least, I've actually seen photographs of it online, including one by Brian Last from the 605 podcast. Though, the only way to get a copy is to give up your address and phone number, so I'm positive you can see why I chose not to go down that path. In a June 6, 2009 revision of their user talk page, Wikipedia user Santo Gold Legund noted that plans were in place to release Blood Circus on pay-per-view and other media in 2009 or 10, though these plans may have been in the works for a while, with paragraph 75 of the amended legal complaint against Santi White noting, Plaintiff has been preparing to re-release his original Blood Circus movie as Santo Gold's Blood Circus on pay-per-view, video, and DVD. Around December of 2009, likely with a few eyes back in the direction of Sanso Gold, a few of which were likely asking some questions, the About section of the Sanso Gold website was updated to clear up some things. Santo was trying to develop a 24 karat jewelry process that would never tarnish. The manufacturers that he was using were not consistent and a lot of the jewelry batches were less than perfect. In addition, his employees would process thousands of orders each week. Many of his employees opened up the envelopes, pocketed the cash, and threw the orders in the trash. Oh, how unfortunate. Also unfortunate, it appears no producers came forward who were interested in Blood Circus. And in 2011, the 35mm reels of the film were up for auction on eBay, listed by someone whose username is substantially similar to one Santo's son appears to use. The starting bid? $21 million. I did not misspeak. $21 million. That's not even the most outrageous part, that's just the starting bid. There was also a buy it now option for $750 million. The entire Hobbit trilogy costs over $125 million less to make. What the absolute fu- Anyway, there were no bids. On June 16th, 2011, likely wanting a project on the back burner in anticipation of Blood Circus's worldwide success, Santo registered a new work with the United States Copyright Office. With a listed creation date of 2002, Cowboys is listed as a piece of text, described as a short story to be adapted into a movie and play. Quote, Evolved from cows, come to Earth to destroy all humans that have ate their ancestors. What does that mean? I cannot tell you. Is that a part of the plot? A part of the title? A description of the antagonist? Of the protagonist? The entire text of the piece? I frankly have no idea. All I know is that it's January 22nd, 2021 as I'm writing this. I just stumbled across it during a last minute fact check. And if I don't use this episode to catalog all the weird stuff I've dug up about this man and his work, then then what's even the point, you know? In July 2011, the Santo Gold website was updated once again, announcing that the film was being re-edited and that later that year, Blood Circus 1 would see release, soon followed by Blood Circus 2. Both films would feature newly discovered and behind-the-scenes footage, thought lost for years. Based on the description, it sounds like Blood Circus 1 would feature a detailed scene-by-scene -scene description of Blood Circus 2. At least, I, I, I think? Look, there's just a lot here, and a lot of it is just hard to make sense of. I'm trying my best. Nonetheless, the announcement promised. Both movies are non-stop comedy action, lunacy, insanity, but pure slapstick fun and often incomprehensible unless you have a higher than normal IQ. Do you think the incomprehensible critique had worn thin at this point? Turn up your volume and enjoy these most fantastic bizarre motion pictures. Now, comprehensible. Yep. According to the amended complaint against Nancy White, however... Blood Circus 2 may not have been new. According to paragraph 33 of the complaint, Santo had actually produced a follow-up movie entitled Blood Slime in 1987 by, quote, 
Using actual footage from Blood Circus, which again featured himself as Santo Gold singing and performing. No information beyond this one mention of its existence is available, so it's impossible to say for sure, though it wouldn't surprise me if Blood Slam and Blood Circus 2 are one and the same. In December 2013, what we can safely assume to be the same print from 2011 was relisted on eBay, with the description a bit more... existent this time. Giving some context and backstory, Extremely rare, if not the only, publicly acknowledged 35mm motion picture print of Blood Circus. This abandoned print was just minutes away from being discarded to a landfill many years ago. The current collector has now asked us to handle this auction. This may be your only opportunity to ever possess this title. Detailing the condition and technical specs. Extremely good image condition on Eastman low-fade positive print film stock with edge date code of 1987. Inspection revealed signs of edge wave or flute distortion predominantly on the non-soundtrack side throughout most of the print. Complete five reel print with all original heads and tails. We found no splices with the exception of the leaders being reattached. Flat aspect ratio with analog stereo soundtrack. Along with terms of the auction. This 35mm moving motion picture film print titled Blood Circus is being sold to one collector to another. No rights given or implied past, present, or future. For personal private use only. By bidding or purchasing Blood Circus, you agree to the aforementioned statement. Though there was some activity on it with 15 bids, the final bid, totaling $222.50, fell below the reserve price and the print was once again unsold. Then, in 2014, the unthinkable happened. AGFA Mystery Movie, Monday, April 21st at Alamo Drafthouse Ritz. Join us, the American Genre Film Archive, as we take in our first viewing of the only existing 35mm print of a film so dangerous, we can't even say its name without risking legal action or apocalypse. Blood Circus was screened in Austin, Texas. Like, screened. Shown in a movie theater. Like... It was a legit screening, with an audience who paid money to see it. It was a secret mystery screening, but still, holy crap! In May 2015, the film was listed on eBay one final time. Though now, with only a buy it now option for $3,499 and free shipping, the print went unsold yet again, and Santo Gold, Blood Circus, and Blood Slam haven't really been heard from since. And there might be a reason why. In my research, I found a memorial page for a Santo V. Bragazzo, who was born on March 7th, 1945, and died on July 25th, 2015, in Windsor Garden, Florida, with arrangements made under the direction of Cedar Hill Cemetery in Baltimore, Maryland. So, is the Santo Gold dead? It would explain why the film was kept at a low profile for a while. However, it isn't totally stagnant. With the release of a film titled Blood Circus in 2017, the Santo Gold website was updated in December 2018, and a YouTube video uploaded in May 2019, telling the public that the new Blood Circus had nothing to do with the original. And with two businesses owned by the Ragazzo family, not named for I feel very obvious reasons, still up and running, and his son being somewhat active on social media. Did you get my tweets? I am the son of Santo Gold. I need your help to produce and distribute our motion picture called the Blood Circus Wrestling Movie. At least until his Twitter account got suspended. Don't know why. It appears as though the proverbial sunglasses, chains, and bedazzled jumpsuit may have been passed on to a new generation. Though, who knows? Maybe he's still out there somewhere, singing a bracelet for your arms and a money-back guarantee. As angels come down to bother everybody, as he writes a strongly worded letter, to a podcaster. I'll keep an eye out in my email, and if the season goes down, you'll know why. This has been Season 2 of the Loose Leaf Celluloid Podcast. The cast featured, in order of appearance, were Hunter, the host of Murder and Such, as Santo Regazzo, Ryan, co-host of Rumor Flies, as the American Genre Film Archive. Podcasts and social links for the cast can be found in the show notes. Opening and closing theme, Always Slept So Soundly, is by Sarasu, off the EP, Domestications. He can be found at soundcloud.com slash and on Twitter, at Sarasu Music. 
Oh, and while you're at it, go to covidvaxinfo.com. Got corrections? Want to get in touch? Shoot me a message at Joss Hosky on Twitter, the show at Loose Cell Pod everywhere, or send an email to looseleafcelluloid at gmail.com. Want to support the show and what I do? Become a patron at patreon.com slash Joss Hosky. Share the show with your friends, or leave a rating and review on your podcatcher of choice. Sources for this episode can be found in the show notes. To find transcripts and any corrections, visit looseleafcelluloid.tumblr.com. And again, that's covidvaxinfo.com.